Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we are now going to solve two of the more unusual systems by substitution. Okay. Uh, line 1 is 4x plus y equals 6, and line 2 is y equals 6 minus 4x. Notice that line 2 is already set up for us to use substitution. So if I have if I have 4x plus y equals 6 and y equals 6 minus 4x and this is line 1 and this is line 2, then you're going to take what y equals in line 2 and put it in for y up in line 1 and that will give you 4x plus 6 minus 4x equals 6. So you'll have 4x plus 6 minus 4x equals 6. This minus this is 0, so you're left with 6 equals 6. All your variables have canceled out and you're left with what is ultimately true, I mean it is true, that 6 equals 6. That's a true thing, a true statement, but it's totally weird. However, it has a particular meaning, and this is where knowing the types, that is the categories of the solutions that you get to systems, the categories of systems, uh, when you get a true answer like this, you have a consistent system, uh, uh, that also is dependent, all right? You have one of those lines where one line is laying right on top of the other line. And so um, we have to look at, what we're not going to answer with one point because these guys touch everywhere. They, they're they're going to have an infinite number of solutions, and so we check our other two answers and we see there are infinitely many solutions. Yes, it's a dependent system. Dependent systems always have infinitely many solutions. The only other answer would be the solution set is empty, and that's what you'd get if you had two parallel lines. Well, these are the kind of lines that you have that lay right on top of each other, and you know by the answer you got. That is, it's strange, but, I mean, you don't have a number. You, you didn't get x equals and then y equals. Yeah, instead, you got a universally true statement, which is that 6 equals 6, which is true. So that's indicative of infinitely many systems. Okay, let's try 9. We're going to have 12x minus, whoop, 12x minus 6 y equals 12, and again, y equals 2x plus 2. Again, y, line 2, is going to be our substitution equation. So we'll have line 1 here and line 2 here, and this is 12x minus 6y equals 12, and y equals 2x plus 2. That's what y equals. We're going to take this in line 2 and substitute it for y in line 1. We'll get 12x minus 6 times 2x plus 2 equals 12. So I'll have 12x minus 6 times 2 is 12, so 12x minus 6 times 2 is minus 12 equals 12. Oh darn, look, 12x minus 12x, you know that's 0. You're going to be left with a negative 12. Be, be sure to bring your negative sign down. And you'll be left with negative 12 equals 12. They look almost alike, but they are not, because the number negative 12 does not equal the number 12. Negative 12 and positive 12 are two different numbers. So this is just plain false. 
the letters have disappeared your variables have vanished and you're left with an untrue number statement that is indicative of an inconsistent system that has no solution so this time when you have no solution then the set of all the solutions is empty because there aren't any solutions there so we're going to click on C for the solution set is the empty set. Oh, I got it right. Okay, now how do you know this? How do you really know this? And the answer is by the kinds of solutions you get. If your variables vanish and you're left with a true number answer, you have a dependent system that has an infinite number of solutions. If your letters disappear, if your variables vanish, and you have a false numerical statement, then that's indicative of parallel lines that uh, are inconsistent. It's an inconsistent system, no solution. So you're going to kind of have to memorize that. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.